Welcome to Allie's Attic Show, where you never know what kind of surprise you're going to find in my attic. I'm your host, Allie, and today my guests, possibly guests, are a blues rock riff based band formed in 2016, The Underground Vault. Please say hello to Blair from The Underground Vault. Hello. Hello there. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I am doing well. I'm doing well. What time is it there? Because it's not even, it's just, it's 12.30 p.m. here. I think it's about 6.30 here. Okay, so it's not too bad. Not too <laughs> I was bad, like, no, one thirty. So yeah, okay, perfect. Okay, so basically, I mean, I know of you, very, like, obviously. Um, the best part, before you guys came on my show, when I did the top 25 favorite indie artist songs of 2018 on Ali's Amplified Attic, I got all kinds of votes for Colt. And I was like, um, I don't even have that song. <laughs> <laughs> so you ended up in my contest, and you guys did really well, which was amazing. Um, and now you're on my show. So basically, tell me your journey, Blair. Like I know you. Uh, there's first off, tell me who's all in the band. So there's me. Uh, I'm the lead singer and lead guitarist in the band, front man. Uh, there's Jamie Dove, who's on rhythm guitar. Uh, there's Pete Sadler, who's on bass guitar, and there's Dan Young on drums. Okay. And you guys, like I said, formed in 2016. Yeah, correct, yeah. And you, you've all been in other bands, and you kind of all knew of each other. Um, and Pete was only the new kid, right? He was the, new, he was the only one that really didn't, you guys didn't know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, me, uh, Dan, and Jamie was in a previous band many, many years ago called Free State. And uh, we all kind of was in that band together for about four or five years. Um, and then we kind of, once that band folded, uh, we all went our separate ways for a while because it was, it was quite an intense journey we went on ourselves in that band. And then uh, about five years went past and uh, me and Jamie got back together and decided we still had some fire and we wanted to do something different. So we formed uh, the Underground Vault and Dan was suddenly very interested <laughs> that we'd formed a new band. And um, he knew a bass player called Pete and we, we dragged Pete in and uh, here we are. Yeah. Well, and I'm glad you can hear you are. Um, okay, so who does most of the writing? Is it you or? It's me and Jamie. Uh, most of the songs start by uh, me on coming up with some kind of guitar riff mm -hmm. or some kind of uh, verse. And then I'll just kind of send it over to Jamie and then we'll come up with some lyrics uh, or we'll meet and go around to one each other's house. And then we'll kind of form sort of like 80% of the song like that. And then uh, once we get in the studio, we'll kind of work on the final arrangements with the other guys, you know. But um, that's kind of how most songs are written. But the kind of initial ideas on guitar come from come from me and Jamie. Okay. So then once everything, like it's, it seemed really easy, it, like you guys say, and it happened really fast. Yeah. And you booked into a local studio to record drums for your debut EP. And then you recorded yeah. all the guitar vocals guitars and vocals at Blair's home studio and the EP was called Dawnbreaker. Yeah, correct. Yeah, we had, we had a friend who had a, a little local studio and uh, he found that we was going to re be recording um, our debut EP and said um, for us to go and record the drums at his place. We quickly put the drums down there and then we done the rest at my place, my home. <laughs> you know, the singing was recorded in my bedroom and the uh, <laughs> guitars and recorded in my bedrooms and in the toilet and bathroom. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's how we've done it. We've done it all very organically. <laughs> that it is worked. too funny. It did. It worked. Okay, so <laughs> your EP hit the online community and all kinds of stuff started happening. You were getting gigs. Um, and you've been gigging all around London and outer London, performing at prestigious festivals such as Ealing Blues Festival and St. Mag's Fair. Yeah, correct. Yeah, we've been uh, doing the rounds and uh, it seems to be seems to be working quite well, we're getting some great feedback and the fan base seems to be growing uh, UK and in the US all over, so we can't be happy enough. No kidding. That's how you ended up being on my show, because <laughs> people were voting <laughs> yeah. for you. Um, okay, so you decided to go back into the studio and record your second EP, In the Water, and it got yeah. released in 2018 on all major platforms. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. I mean... Um, you know, the baby, the baby EP hit the market, uh, Dawnbreaker, 
And uh, it, it's kind of quite a raw album, but it kind of sums up what, what we are in that first EP. Mm-hmm. And done, it kind of you know, put us on a platform so everyone could hear what they were going to get and what we were. And then we had to have a follow-up. So I mean, the follow-up was six songs instead of five. Um, but we kind of want to take it, sort of expand on the sound a little bit more, give people a little bit more to let people know what we're capable of. Um, and uh, songs like, actually, songs like In the Water, kind of, is really like eight or nine minutes long, kind of expand and show people what we can really do, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it's, it's been a second great, great follow-up. Yeah. It, it, I, I'm going to talk about your songs because one of them blew me away. Like, they all blew me away, but this one was just like, wow. Because I know that you guys are influenced a lot by the 90s bands, like um, Oasis, Blur, The Verve. Now, yeah. somebody handed you <laughs> a cassette with um, Derek and the Dominoes and then Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's like a big mix and pop, our sound. I mean, I grew up um, listening to my, my father used to give me uh, cassettes. Do you remember them? Yes, <laughs> I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> he, used me, he used to give me cassettes of um, people like Fat Domino, Chuck Berry, um, people like that, and um, so I, quite, I got brought up on the, on the whole proper 50s rock and roll sound. Mm-hmm. And during the 90s, you know, I kind of would listen to bands like Oasis and Blur and all that kind of whole 90s movement of, of alternative indie music. Mm-hmm. And it inspired me to pick up the guitar and start learning. And then uh, my stepfather at the time suddenly handed me two separate cassettes, and one was the Jimi Hendrix Experience, and one was Derek in the Dominoes. <laughs> and uh, from there on, that, that my whole guitar style was born, you know, blues kind of guitar playing, rock playing. Yeah. And uh, they're my biggest inspirations. 90s and also people like Eric Clapton and Jimi Hendrix. And I think that kind of sound is quite apparent in, in, in the songs that, that we kind of write. Oh, my God, is it ever. So you're a 60s <laughs> blues rock yeah. to 90s Britpop rock. Um, yeah. And... It's kind of like a bluesy hard rock edge that you guys play, um, but it's so good. Like it is so good. Um, <laughs> now, okay, so you're hitting new levels of playing and performing, and yeah. nothing's going to stop you. <laughs> you're going to give the people what they want, and they want to hear more, and they want to hear you guys. The, like the response from everybody for the contest that I had was, I was like, wow. And then just hearing, just watching Twitter, and seeing everybody commenting and talking about how good you are and like you're getting such rave reviews it's awesome yeah i mean it's, it's fantastic uh just we can't believe the uh response we've been getting you know and um it's 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 amazing you know we're, we're definitely not the sort we're completely completely motivated to, to do the things we love well we always have been you know but to get the kind of backing of, of the fans and the fans mean so much to us because without fans a band is nothing mm-hmm. and uh a band, I think bands forget that it's not just about the musicians writing the songs and performing, it's about the people that come to watch you as well. And that's a big thing for us, is that, you know, it's, it's so important for us. I love the bottom, the, the last sentence in your bio <laughs> is <laughs> you're giving them what they want, which is a real alternative to the commercial pop rubbish, your words, <laughs> we are fed on mainstream radio. Everybody has yeah. heard me go on in my interviews about commercial versus indie and I think there's kind of it's starting to change because I think people are getting tired of hearing the same thing over and over and we all know that commercial if they think you know they're they're getting a hit from this person well they're going to get another person to sound just like that person and you know what I mean so they all sound the same and it's not the artist's fault they're all very talented but the industry is kind of telling them this is what they have to do yeah I mean when you look at the whole uh, music industry now, I mean, you can't you can't blame the artists as much because these are people with you know aspirations and they want to achieve things and mm-hmm. they think by signing a big record deal with you know one of the big labels is is going to get them get them their dreams and it kind of does to a degree, but once they kind of get caught up into that, they become part of a machine, part of a big movement, and the songs get written by them by you know most songs in in the top forty are written by you know, five or six different songwriters mm-hmm. that, that write all the songs for everyone. And that's why everything in the charts sounds so similar. Yeah. Because it's just, it's just completely tied up with the big labels. And, you know, the indie scene, 
uh, where the real bands are and the real artists who write all their own music. That's why there's so much diversity between the different artists because everyone writes individually. Everyone's their own writer. And so it's, it's, it's real music. It's, it's real artistry, you know, the indie scene, whereas the other stuff isn't really. Yeah. It's just about money making. Exactly. And, and that's what I think people are getting a bit, a bit, are seeing it now, you know, big shows like the X Factor shows and all these other ones. I think people are seeing it and getting a bit bored of it now. Yeah. And I agree totally. Like, I've, I mean, I've, it'll be two years Saturday that I've been doing this and I'm yeah. starting, like, I've been watching the shift happen and it is. Yeah. And I'm so happy <laughs> because, like you say, there is so much talent and it's so different. Like, every band is different, every artist is different. And that's what I love about it because I don't want to hear the same thing over and over again. I want to discover new music. I want to hear different bands and different, you know what I mean? So I'm yeah, really, I'm absolutely. glad it's happening. I'm glad it's happening. Um, and I'm glad that I got to be a part of it. <laughs> Watching absolutely. all of you guys grow is just, it's amazing for me. Um, okay. So you've been doing this for a while now, Blair. If you had any advice to give anybody that's, you know, thinking of getting together with a band or getting into this industry, what would you tell them based on what you've gone through? I would say uh, not to look for, for quick success. Um, to, you know, nothing, nothing good comes without hard work. Things, things that are real uh, take hard work and dedication. And in the end, you get what you want. But, you know, to, to stay true to yourself, don't sell out. Be be individual. Be an artist. Don't don't look for the big labels. And you know to get people to listen to your music, and get your music out there. It's so easy these days. So just stay true to yourself. Work on your own style. Be unique. Be you. And, and work hard. And if you're good, you'll get heard. Definitely, that's great advice. Great advice. Okay, so what two songs are we going to hear from you? Uh, Cult and Ghost. Um, in the city. In the city. Yeah. yeah was the one, right? And then ghost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So ghost. I yeah. just want to talk about it briefly. When yeah. I was reading your bio, I mean, I listened to yeah. you guys anyway. I was reading your bio, and when I saw Jimi Hendrix, I was like, ah, because when ghost starts off, it takes me back to Jimi Hendrix. It. Yeah. Wow. It is so. Like I'm in love with the song. I love all of your songs, but that one just calls to me for whatever reason. I mean, I'm a '70s child, so I really like all of that music. Um, yeah. You know, '60s, '70s. So it just, I love it. And God, you guys are talented. Like everybody in the band is talented. It's just amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that song's a very special song. I mean, all the songs are written about real things. We write about real things in all the songs. That's what makes them them meaningful. But but that particular song um, was one of our first songs that I already had coming into the band. And um, it's, it's about, <laughs> a very, I don't know what people believe and what people want to believe in the supernatural and stuff like that, but I had a, what I perceived to be an extremely frightening supernatural experience. That's why the song's called Ghost. Wow. And uh, after that happened, I, I kind of woke up next morning, tried to do my guitar and started writing this song and, and put my feelings and my fear down into the song and that's what Ghost is about and that kind of Jimi Hendrix sound that came naturally you know I had some of the same settings that, that he used and it was written about a real real scary experience that I went through oh my so, goodness um, yeah it might be shocking to some people to hear that but it's it's true if you just listen to the words in the song um it, it sums up what I went through in, in one night about three in the morning good lord and it, what is that time? It's three. What time is it that always stuff happens? It's three something, isn't it? They say it's three a.m. and it was about three a.m. that I woke up one night uh, in the middle of the night, um, and the room was freezing cold, and I was sweating. I'd had some kind of weird, crazy dream, and I felt like a presence in the room, and that's what I felt. And uh, I was terrified, and yeah. uh, I didn't know what to do, and I could hear something moving around my room. Oh my god! I, yeah, <laughs> I would have had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what I think we've all experienced it some some people are open to the fact that they've experienced yeah. it and some people yeah. aren't but I think yeah. everybody has because I believe in it so I mean yeah. I, my grandpa is always around anyway <laughs> we're, we're going to go off on a different tangent now yes. um, yeah. all right so people can purchase your music anywhere online they can also follow you guys on Twitter Instagram and Facebook and yes. now the name of the band, obviously, is The Underground Vault. But to find them on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, it's at The UV Band. So if Correct, anybody wants yeah. to find them, that's how they, they find them, The UV Band. 
Um, yes. Say hi to the guys. I got to talk to Jamie briefly. So say hi. I know you guys are getting ready to go and do a gig or a rehearsal. I can't remember now what he said. We're, yeah, we're going to rehearse. We're going to, we've got some gigs coming up. Um, one locally in Staines, which is quite near us. We've got a nice big uh, headline slot there. And then we're going to go into heavy rehearsals for our Scotland tour, oh. uh, which we're going up to Scotland on the 4th of April. Um, we've got some gigs lined up up there, so it's going to be really fun. Awesome. I have family in Scotland. That's where both ah. my, yeah, I'm Scottish. Both my grandparents came from there, like all, all of right. my grandparents. I'm going to get there one day. Hopefully you guys get to where I live one day. <laughs> that would be where awesome. Are you, where are you? I'm in Manitoba in Canada. Okay. And it's not very often people come here. They usually go to Toronto, Vancouver, you know, Calgary, Edmonton. That's yeah. just where a lot of the acts go. But we're starting to get more. And I'm excited because hopefully, hopefully I get to see a lot of the people that I interview because that's, that's the part that I wish I could. You know what I mean? <laughs> but when I, yeah. when I win the lottery, I'm going to just come and fly and meet all you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. We'd love to. Love to see you <laughs> Or you could just fly us out. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, I could bring you guys here and you can perform here and I can show everybody, look. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Anyways, as long, Blair. As long as you make us a nice cup of coffee and a quick breakfast, we'll be happy. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> okay, Blair, thank you so much for coming on the show and I wish you the best success. Tell the guys, you know, congratulations so far and just keep going. Don't ever stop. It's a pleasure. I really appreciate it. Big pleasure to speak to you. And um, yeah, I'd love to speak to you again sometime. Yeah, definitely. And anytime, anytime something new happens, you can always come back on the show. So Fantastic. have a great day and have a great rehearsal. I guess it's evening. Have a great evening. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and thank you for joining me on Allie's Attic Show. Keep checking my YouTube channel because you never know what kind of surprises you're going to find in my attic. Cheers. Cool.